What if the Virgin Mary and all her heavenly virginal glowing young motherly beauty gave out a first rate blowjob just about anybody that really wanted one? They say heroin keeps you young as long as you keep it fed. It's going without what makes you old, she said. I'm a private investigator. None of this is very true. It's the best I could put together, but everybody was lying all the time, so I wouldn't believe any of it if I was you. I'm a private investigator. My technique is to sit and listen. I used to smoke a cigarette. That would give me something to do. Did he hit her because she was too beautiful, too good at it, too bad at it, too many bodies ahead of him? Did he even know he was doing it when he was doing it? Of course, but he did. Nikki Slag is an old man now. <laughs> 54, I think. Look at this leg, he says. It's all puffed out. He nips around the room. Look at this book, he said. She wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Tuesday afternoon, or is it Friday? Seven long years of methadone rehabilitation, shaken and stirred with the occasional target of opportunity, target of opportunity, too many of everything, and Nicky never could say no. But Mary goes slow. He did her a favor to wake up. The savior. The day she walked out on Nikki, she walked out on everything else. Now she's drug free with an arts degree, and she maybe even knows a bit of that to Nikki. He used to tell her she could do anything between punches. She comes on Tuesday or Friday afternoons. She watches and listens. He waves his arms and looks around the room. His old paintings hang in the air like ghosts, like witnesses. The brushes are dry. He still wants to follow me, she said. I just don't want him to die. So, again, PGLD, horrible contradictions. But also, this was a relationship that saved both their lives. They were both headed for death by drugs. And, um, Because of their relationship, they helped each other to kick us, even though it was not a quite good way that it happened was that he hit her. It was an abusive relationship, but it, and, and it drove her away from him, it drove her away from the drugs. And because she walked out on him and left that life and banned him, got shot. So I pull this up with a long relationship, it's a horrible and no relationship. But there was also a real element of love mixed in with it. And um, I'd argue that you can't separate these things. You have to understand the bestiality that's mixed in with love in order to transcend that. But you can't transcend it by ignoring it. You can't transcend by leaving it behind. Um, for example, Inspired by an Irish legend, the legend of Grania. And uh, it's not such a well known legend, but it's very similar to one that's a little better known, the legend of Deirdre, Deirdre of the Sorrows. It's a famous poem by Yeats, Deirdre of the Sorrows. And uh, in the legend of Grania and in the legend of Deirdre, actually, Grania uh, is a young girl who's betrothed to the king. And before the king marries her, she meets a young man, a young prince, and falls in love with him. And they run away together to escape the wrath of the king. And they live the wilds of Scotland for several years because they can't come back. They know that the king will kill them. And finally, the king sends a messenger, promising that he won't kill them if they come back. And the prince says, I don't believe him. I think if we go back, we're going to kill him. I think we have to stay here. And she says, no, we can't stay here because you need to work out 
Let's have to think of it for next time. <laughs> we can't stay here because if we do, we won't continue to love each other. And he said, no, no, I'll love you forever. And she said, I know you think that, and I feel that way too, but you don't realize that when you look at me, you don't just see me with your own eyes. You see me with the eyes of every man who looks at me and wants me and desires me but can't have me because I belong to you. And that's why your love never dies. It's not just me and you in isolation, but it's you and me in this whole universe of desire. And it's the same for me. I love you with all my heart, but I know that when I look at you, I don't just see you with my own eyes. I see you with all the women that I know who want you, who want you really badly, but can't have you because you're mine. And that keeps us bound together in a way that we need from time to time. So we can't, I think I'm gonna, okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we, from time to time we need, uh, we need that. And so we have to go back to Ireland. And so they did, and sure enough, the king killed them. <laughs> And that was true in both Deirdre and the legend of Grania. But when I read that, it, it, when I read what she said, I thought, oh, God, that's true. You know, darn. You know, and I know that because I know that from my own experience. And it caused me to write this song, which I'm going to sing. Uh, and I'm hopefully going to be joined by the band a little bit. But I didn't bring the music or my saxophone this time. I will next time. Uh, so, they'll probably come in as we go along. I don't know if any of you, get, any of you know a, a song by Dr. John. If you ever, uh, maybe no one's ever heard of him. He was big in the 70s, uh, kind of a soul singer. Uh, he had this big hit that the chorus went something like, uh, you came here with my best friend John, and here I am, my best friend Jim, and here I am trying to take you away from him. Uh, but if I don't do it, you know, somebody else. But I hope the words will carry it. Question, Scotty, because uh, this is 
my point conviction that there is no spaces in the world that is based on uh, the country of a uh, unicornal union. All must have